the next type of loan that you will see, and this is becoming more and more common, is this thing called the ARM, the Adjustable Rate Mortgage. We told you a minute ago that the previous example was a 30-year fixed interest rate, meaning the interest rate was fixed throughout the life of the loan. In this particular case, it is an adjustable rate mortgage. It is going to or could change throughout the life of the loan. And you guys know what is at the end of an arm, right? The middle finger. Because that's usually what happens. <laughs> that is the adjustable rate. It's going to move. Now, when it comes to understanding the adjustable rate mortgage, there are four things that you have to understand about how an arm actually works. The most important thing is what is the financial index that this loan is based upon? All right. And the lender decides this, not you. Your only decision would be, I don't want that loan. I'll go. So, okay. But what I'm saying is you don't get to pick it. The lender is going to say, we use the 10 year treasury note. We use, you know, a government T bill. We use LIBOR. Um, don't worry about what it is. It's actually probably not around now. But whatever it is, it is some basis for the loan. And the bank will tell you that. Now, to that index, they will add a margin on top of that. Okay? So, think about this. Could Walmart charge you, when you go in and buy something, could they charge you some basis, whatever we paid, plus a quarter for your bag of Doritos. They could do that. They don't, but understand the concept. So what I'm telling you is they could say, hey, Mr. Consumer, you are going to pay what we pay plus a quarter, and that quarter is called the margin, and that is our profit for that loan. This is how the adjustable rate works. The bank will borrow the money from some other institution and base it upon some index, what they actually pay for the money, and then they will add a margin on top of that. It's very easy to see the bank's profit on an adjustable rate mortgage because it is called out exactly like that. They will say the consumer price index plus two, where the consumer price index is the financial index and the margin is the plus two. So all you need to do is go and look, well, that interest rate for today, the consumer price index is three. That's what the bank borrowed the money at from somewhere else. And they're adding two to it. So my interest rate would be five at this particular moment because it's the consumer price index plus two. It's the 10 year treasury note plus one and a half. It's the LIBOR rate plus three. That's how they identify these adjustable rates. They literally tell the consumer the index and the margin. All right. And that index can fluctuate. This is where the adjustable comes in. The index that they have tied this loan to can go up or down. So imagine a boat floating on water. Here is the index. Here is the index plus the margin. And as the water goes up, so does the boat. And as the water goes down, so does the boat. This is the adjustable portion. As that index goes up, you've got the index and the margin. Here's the consumer price index plus two. 
that consumer price index goes up and goes down. Your arm is going to adjust accordingly, right? It's going to adjust accordingly. Now, in order to keep all hell from breaking loose, let's say that index is three one day and something happens and it jumps to 20. There is some protection built inside of this adjustable rate mortgage to protect that buyer from that happening. There are these rate caps that are involved. They will cap the, the maximum amount it can adjust so that a consumer doesn't have a $700 payment in one month and the hell in the handbasket happens and their next month's payment's $38,000. They protect the consumer by having there are two adjustments. The first adjustment is called the periodic change. How much, what is the maximum, to what degree can that index adjust for each consecutive adjustment? Each period, it changes. So in an example, it might be plus or minus one. So we have an index of three and the bank says, we are going to add a margin of two. Let me go back and restate that a better way. They, the bank says, we use the consumer price index plus two. There is the index. The plus two is the margin. And in an example, let's say the consumer price index is 3% the day you got the loan. Therefore, your loan amount is three plus two or five percent. And that consumer price index actually can change next month. So next month, let's put this as the initial. Next month, month two, the consumer price index is 3.2%. So what you now have is 3.2 plus 2. This month, your interest rate is 5.2%. Then next month, hell in a handbasket happens. And the third month, it jumps to 29%. Don't ask about the economics. I'm trying to prove a point. All right. Let's just say it jumps to 29 so theoretically, your loan is then going to be 29% plus the two or 31.0%. Dude, my house payment in month two was 800 in month three. It's now 14,000 or whatever. Okay. There is protections to keep this from happening. The first protection we mentioned is called a periodic adjustment. And let's say in this loan, when you got it at CPI plus two, it's going to say we have a plus or minus 1% cap. Meaning that at any given time, in consecutive changes, it can only go up at the max, I guess it could go down, only 1%. So back to this example. If this consumer price index goes from 3.2 to 29, and we said, well, your loan's going to go from 3.2 plus 2 to 29.2, no. This cap rate is going to kick in and go, okay, that can't be 29. It can only be 4.2, right? Because it was 3.2 this month and the periodic cap says 
So it will go to 4.2 plus my 2 is 6.2%. This would not happen. It's protecting you. Now, next month, it could still go to 5.2. Then it could go to 6.2. So there is a second cap rate called a lifetime cap rate. And just for future reference, this number I put right here, this 1%, is an example for me. Doesn't mean it could be anything. It's whatever they tell you. And they would tell you the day you got this loan. All right. I'm using one as an example. It could be plus or minus half a percent. Could be plus or minus 2%. It's whatever the lender has decided for that particular loan. I am using one as an example. The second one, and this is an example as well, they could say over the life of the loan, it could only adjust 5% total over the life of the loan. So let's go back down and look at this. And that's crooked, and I apologize for that. But it started at 3%, then it goes to 3.2, then it goes to 4.2, then 5.2, then 6.2, then 7.2, then 8.2, then 9. Uh, no, 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 no. Can't go because the most over the life of the loan in this example is 5%. So the highest that could go would be uh, 8 because we originally started at three, all right? So it's based on that. This periodic went from 3.2 to 4.2 because it's based on the previous month. The lifetime uses the actual basis of the loan, which in this case was three. So the most this loan could go would be three plus five, which is eight, plus their margin of two. So the highest it could go would be 10% because even though the periodic would have pushed it over, there is actually a lifetime cap on this loan of plus or minus five. So there are two caps that we look at a period, which is how much can it adjust in consecutive changes and the lifetime, how much can it change during the lifetime of the loan? The fourth thing that there is inside of this loan is this thing that allows you to convert it from a arm to a fixed rate. So if we went back to this example and we showed you this process of where it went from 4.2 to 5.2 to 6.2 to 7.2, and then it would cap out, there is a time frame in there where you would have said, hey, it's now 5.2 because of the change. I think it's going to go higher. I want to convert this arm to fix it for the rest of the loan and keep it at this 7.2 rate. I'm going to convert from an arm to a fixed. And this is the rate. So now you have taken that adjusting out of it. So if it goes up to that eight, it won't affect you because you fixed or locked in right here at 7.2. Now you're golden, all right? Conversely, what happens if it actually, maybe something in the world happened good and it goes down to four, back to 4.2 the next month? Well, you locked in, you're still at that 7.2. Okay, so that conversion, you got to be kind of careful, could actually come back and maybe bite you in the butt because it maybe will go back down to three. And if it did, you'd be back down in this number, but you locked in and you're now fixed here. So understand that that conversion allows you to convert from the fixed or from an adjustable to a fixed. Now, there's one other thing I'm not sure I talked about but I do want to make sure we understand. When it comes to the growing equity mortgage is the next thing here. You guys all know what happens to your loan payment if you spread it out into a longer time frame. You know, here's the amount of money I borrowed 
and let's say I have a 10 year loan and the payments here, right? But uh, if I spread that 10 year loan out to 30 years and I'm still covering the same amount of principal, my loan payment actually goes down, right? Because I now have more time. If I shortened it, it goes up. The amount of monthly payment goes up. If you think about it, when I was a kid, when you bought a car, there were only two-year loans. My first car was a two-year loan. Unfortunately, now due to the economy and a whole bunch of other stuff, cars cost more. And the only way for a person to actually afford that monthly payment is to make that loan longer because it lowers the amount of monthly payment. They went to a four-year car loan. Then they went to a five-year, 60 months. Did you guys know that Naval Credit or Naval Union or Naval Credit actually has a 10-year car loan? If you look at some of those new Cadillac Escalades, especially the e-version, it was $185,000 for that car. How in the hell are you going to afford that monthly payment? Well, the easiest way is to make that loan longer. They actually now have 10-year car loans, and they do that so that it lowers the payment. There's a loan in Japan called a generational loan, which is 60 years in length, and it's taken out by the father and paid off by the son. That is the only way that people in Japan can afford some of this property is to make that length so long that it brings that payment down to a respectable level and it's called a generational loan. So you need to understand that to understand the next loan. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Have to deal with a phone call. So I forgot where we were.